lady wins a prize. <laughs> that part where you're trying to be flat. It wasn't off key. It's barely noticeable. Well, barely noticeable because it never happened. Daniel, was I off? But don't listen to him, Donahue. He's playing you like a fiddle. That wasn't off. No, it could probably never happen again. What are the chances? Unless, of course, you've got a tin ear. Tin ear? That's oh, it, Kevin. Oh, oh, I can't take any more. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. That's enough. Yeah, enough. Fine. Fine. Last one in the top, sturdy rotten egg. Oh, how about a picture of Madigan's men for posterity? Come on, boys. All right, over here. All right. <clears throat> can, I, can I need the medal this time? Uh, no. no. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, ready? All right. <laughs> Would you mind taking a shot of us, please? Oh, I'd be honored. Oh, Kevin. Okay. Yes, sir. Just get her ugly mugs out. Together again, Mary. I promise you that. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountain side. I want you to go. What am I going to do without you? Don't forget about me. Fiona, you're my best friend in the whole wide world. I'll never forget about you. I promise. Catherine! I miss you already. Goodbye, Fee. Sorry, sweetheart. Goodbye. You take care. And you. I think this is going to be really good for us. I know it. I'm going to stay with your cousin Arthur's family in a really big house. They have two kids your age. You'll all go to the finest schools. You love schools, sweetheart. I got everything you need. I won't be far. I I I'm just going to help build this ship and then I'll come get you as soon as I can. But... Please. Catherine, I need to know that you're okay. 
Thanks for all that I have. When we part, you take this me right in it, every day. And that way when I come back, you can tell me all you've done. I couldn't love you more. conclude, the orchestra will begin playing, and upon Jeffrey's cue, the guests will enter the ballroom. One second. Okay, clearing your clutter. How to lose what you don't need, want, or love. Excellent. The advertisers will love that. Okay, health and fitness. What's going on with health and fitness? Oh, right here. Oh. Okay, pump up your routine without pushing yourself. There's nothing wrong with pushing yourself. Rethink it. The tables will be overflowing with pillared candles, white peonies, Beckerat crystal, and Tiffany sterling silver, which will be arranged according to the diagram, which Jeffrey will fax you. Please remember, the souffles need to be hot, 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 and the champagne needs to be cold, cold, cold. And at no point is one plate to be served without every plate being served. Okay, one second. Finally, Dr. Kessler. Uh, yes, I'll be responding to three letters we received. How to reject rejection, learning to say yes to success, and stop excusing inexcusable behavior. It's perfect. Okay, it's Friday. So you all know we need the mock-ups layout scallies by midweek next week, so please have your editors hand their work into Jeffrey by the deadline. And finally, I will be leaving on my honeymoon at the end of the month. So I need you all to be working at the top of your game. Okay? Thank you. Yes, and after Stuart and I cut the cake, give our toasts and dance our final dance, which is... Fly me to the moon. Fly me to the moon. Fast, Fast not, not slow. slow. Then it's good night. Do you have any questions? Great. I can't believe I have a new wedding planner and my wedding is three weeks away. Okay, what do you have for me? Right, uh, you and Stuart have an interview with Celebrity Beat in 15 minutes. Where is that? Stewart's office. After that, you have a lunch meeting with the ad department. That's on for one. I'd like to take that. Here? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm. And let's bring in some tuna, tuna sashimi, sashimi miso, miso soup, soup, and cucumber, cucumber salad. salad. Delicious. Thank you. Oh, another wedding gift. Mm. Mm. I love this already. It feels fabulous. What do you think? A vase? Sterling or crystal? Mm. No, it's not crystal. May I? Sure. All right, Boy Scouts. All right. <clears throat> and there we are. Ooh. For you. And I bet it's a music box. I love music boxes. I have one that plays all oh, sweet mystery of life. It's fantastic. My dearest daughter, Catherine, when this letter finds you, I will have passed on. What? You are truly all that I have in this world, and so, Catherine, it is to you that I must turn. It is my last wish that you return home to New Kerry and spread my ashes on the hillside so I may join your mother, my beloved Mary. Yes, wish. His wish. Return to sender. Okay, see, this is why you should always stick to the registry. Now you come back. Kate Madigan. You're so young, yet so accomplished. As editor-in-chief of the nation's premier lifestyle magazine and the toast of New York, now you have everything, including your media tycoon boss, Stuart Wallach. How does it feel? Honey? 
Sorry? How do you feel? Oh, it is incredibly exciting. We are both very much looking forward to our wedding day. And what do you think will be your key to a successful marriage? Being on time. I think respect for someone's time is the greatest compliment you can give. And may I ask, how soon can we expect a little one? Pardon? Well, we all know that Stuart already has two grown children who are highly successful in their own right. But when are you thinking of starting a family of your own? Kate agreed early on. No pets, no kids. That's the deal. Yes, we are both quite content with the course our lives are taking and really don't feel the need to alter our trajectory. I mean, when you're a parent, you need to be there. Oh, you need to be available for your child whenever they need, not just when it's convenient or... You need to make your children your number one concern. They just want to be loved and cared for, and if you can't give them that, then you haven't given them anything. So, that's our plan. Alrighty then. Is there something that needs to be addressed? No. It's just... I'm tired. That's all. Kate, there's, a, there's an old aviator saying that goes, fly the airplane first. And it means devote your time only to what's important. Now, you're getting married in exactly one month, and I know you have deadlines and meetings, but... It all has to be perfect. Because if it's not, you'll never get over it. Now, I have a shareholders meeting tomorrow morning in Chicago and then a, a board meeting the next day in Dallas. Are you going to be okay? Yeah. That's my girl. big event coming up. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, a distant relative, uh, someone she hasn't spoken to in years, someone who pretty much has only let her down most of her life, has asked her to do something it, it, unbelievable. It's, it's selfish, really. Uh, totally astounding. Uh, But anyway, she's just wondering if, with everything on her plate, if she is morally obligated to do this thing. Obligated? No. Really. Great. However, whether she feels burdened is another matter. It appears that our reader's concern is the effect the relative's request may have on her, her event perhaps even her entire future. But as you know, one of the principles of the magazine that we continually try to communicate is not just problem solving, but problem resolving. Perhaps our reader just needs a little reminding of that. Kate, would you like me to handle the response letter? No. I'll make sure she gets all that. Kate, 
feel free to let me know if our reader has any more questions. Turn this. Jeffrey! So your father just left you? That's so sad. I know. I never saw him again. Hmm. And you're just gonna do what he asks? You're gonna forget about how much he hurt you? Look, if I truly believe in the principles of this magazine, that doing the right thing, even when it's harder than doing the wrong thing, then yes, I have to do this. Just because he gave up on me so easily doesn't mean I need to mirror his actions. I need to do this, but there's... There's a catch. Stuart can't know what I'm doing. There's no need to get into it with him. It's, it's all in the past. And Stuart wants us to have an uncomplicated life. I, I do too, so... While he's gone, I'm gonna go. And I'm going to accomplish this task. And then it's gonna be over. I need to go. And I need to go now. Good for you. And you're coming with me. What? So I may join your mother, my beloved Mary. Please see that Kavanaugh and Donahue sing Danny Boy for me, as they did for her. I'm ashamed I have nothing to leave you. No keepsakes, no heirlooms. For more than 25 years, I have missed and loved you from afar, not wanting to interfere with your new life that seemed to be going on so well without me. I hope you can find it in your heart to forgive me. Forever, your dad. We don't have a choice. There's always a choice. Yes, but not in New Kerry. Unless you want to walk. Huh? Ad department. The only calls I'll take are Stewart's. Have everything else with a voicemail. Mm-hmm. Finnegan's? Fiona Finnegan's. Oh. Certainly. Um, right. 
Uh, first, you, uh, you follow the road for maybe, say, one mile. Perhaps three quarters of a mile. You know, we should really figure it out one day. Maybe clock it. See how far we're walking. I hear 10,000 paces a day is what they recommend. <laughs> Sorry about him. It's uh, straight through town, carry on past the first intersection, and it's on your right. You can't miss it. Great. Thank you. You have no idea who that is. Someone looking for Finnegan's. That was Kate Madigan. She's the magazine editor. And she's from New Carrie, and she's here. So how far do you actually think it is? You know there's a storm brewing over Antarctica, the likes of which they have never seen? Mm. Fiona, they're not going to get her any faster just because you keep looking out the window. <laughs> Craig, come. She's here. Boys, she's here! all right i couldn't believe it when the call came kate madigan i thought my kate madigan oh you must be jeffrey this is incredible that is incredible God, you look incredible i can't believe this it's been so long 25 years <clears throat> oh sorry <laughs> this is my husband craig hello delighted truly and best of all you just missed that rapid drop in air pressure Big storm last week. Huge. Craig loves the weather. Here. Hey, 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 hey. Whoa! Got one? Mom, let me go. Are those all yours? Yep. Yeah. This one is Seamus. He's eight. Say hello. 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 I've known your mother forever. I... Nice to meet you. <laughs> oh, and uh, this is Bumper. <laughs> he just showed up on our door one day and we thought, ah, that's another boy. <laughs> oh, but you'll have time to meet everyone later. Come on. You two must be exhausted. <laughs> nice to meet you, Jeffrey. <laughs> like what? Go get it, come on. Right, luggage. So, Kate, okay, you're in here. And uh, Jeffrey, you're just down the hall on the left. I oh. hope you like it. I'm sure it's perfect. Thank yeah. you. Craig will be up in a minute with your bags. So, how's your father? I think about him so often. How's he doing? Well, I should tell you, he, he passed away recently. Oh, no. What happened? I can't say exactly. Oh, I'm sorry. It's too much for you. you... No, no, no. No, it, it's okay. It's just... It's fine. Really. Fine. I just mean it happens. That's all. So, I'm here to spread his ashes as he wished, and, um, then I'll be headed home, and that will be that. Well, there we are, then. Oh, by the way, I pulled these out of the garage when I heard you were coming. You still have these. You told me to keep your half so they would always be together. We made these at the fair before I left. Actually, the fair is tomorrow. The fair. I'm really looking forward to catching up with you, Catherine. Fiona, thank you so much for everything. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Fee, you wouldn't happen to know where I could find Kavanaugh and Donahue. Well, you won't find them together, that's for sure. What do you mean? Oh, they had a fight years ago. They haven't spoken in ages. You know, it's hard to believe that two best friends, as close as they were, have hardly uttered a word in 20 years. It's sad, really. 
Anyway, you'll find Kavanaugh at the half shilling. Donahue's generally at the Coach and Lantern. They're both a short walk. I'm headed out. Do you want to come? Uh, have you seen my room? It's a world of tchotchkes and doilies. Until it's organized, this is where I'm needed. Oh, and then there's this room once I'm finished. Have they not read the magazine? I don't think so. Be nice. I am. I'm just adhering to the perfect principles. Oh, uh, speaking of which, Kate, if we were in the city, in the town car, and you were heading to Coco Pazzo or Jean-Georges, then it'd be perfect, but here, eh. What? Well, in the words of our dear Coco Chanel, always remove, always strip away, yeah? It is what it is, okay? Huh? Suit yourself, have fun. Mm. These people really are stuck in the 20th century, aren't they? might be coming. Welcome home, Catherine. It's good to see you. Oh, you look... You look beautiful. Just like your mom. Sit, 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 sit. How's Daniel? Uh, he's... Um... Unfortunately, that's that's why I'm here. He's no. Oh Lord, I'm so sorry. But that's well, that's just terrible, Catherine. I, I can't imagine how that must have been for you. Is there something I can do? Is there anything you need? Say the word. I'll I'll do anything. Actually, there is something. I need you to sing at my father's memorial service. Oh, sweetheart. Absolutely. With Donahue? Absolutely not. But I thought you said... Yeah, but not that. Would you like a drink? What happened between you two? That's private between me and him. Besides, he knows I won't speak to him until he apologizes. I don't need you two to be friends again. Or even to speak to each other. I just need you to sing. So I can get home to oh, finish planning my wedding. Our little girl's getting married. <sighs> Consider it a wedding present. Ugh. Oh, you don't need but my father does. It's what he wanted. And I am trying to prove that, unlike him, I can do the right thing. It's one of the perfect principles, and I... The what? Never mind. <laughs> what if I can get Donahue to apologize? When monkeys fly over the moon, you want me to apologize? Yes. Uh, one of you, at least. <laughs> Look, Catherine, I know this isn't easy for you to come here and ask us to do this. But you have to respect what's happened between us. I just need the two of you to sing together. Please, I'm begging you. I'm sorry. I can't help you. Okay. Name your price. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. 
It's worth it to me. I just need to get this done and get home. So just give me a number and add as many zeros as you like. I... I... Price... Y you can't buy my honor. <sighs> I'm not trying to buy your honor. Don't you, I... I'm trying to buy my freedom. I really need to get home. Catherine, you are home. Go, go. Good evening. Hey. When I'm not giving horrible, punishable directions to strangers, I sometimes invite them to dinner. Not that you exactly qualify as a stranger, per se, since you're from New Kerry. That is quite loathsome, isn't it? When people use the term per se. It's stodgy. Pedestrian, really. Anyway, um... Aaron is obsessed with the fact that you are here and asked if you'd care to join us. Pathetic, really. I don't even know who you are. Oh, Connor Bailey. Kate Madigan. Please, make me look successful. Okay. Kate, this is Aaron. Hi. Hi. I'm Aaron's friends. I take no responsibility. I am such a fan of your magazine. Thank you. Can we get this woman some food, please? So what are you going to have? Uh, may I see the wine list? Red and white. That's what they have. Truly. Truly. White. And a salad. Fried haddock, broiled haddock, town tavern shrimp, breaded shrimp, Fried stuffed shrimp, crab cakes, and fried clams. That's what, that's what they have. What's your fancy? Just the wine, please. Thank you. <laughs> so, you're back. It's very temporary. Uh, family business. Come on. see That doesn't bother you. Aaron? No, no, we're... We're friends, strictly. But there's a great girl underneath that tuft of venom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I should probably get going. Thank you, Connor, for including me tonight. It's nice. Uh, before you go, have you ever... What? Play darts. A lifetime ago. Oh, well then. Oh, wait. Uh oh, hang on. You know that leaning way over the line is a real loser move. Throwing the dart like a baseball is also highly ill advised, since you might take someone's eye out, and not appreciated by your fellow darters. All right, here, give it a go. Teacher. Another white wine for the last. No. Do that again. No, we didn't. And then Donahue said there wasn't a chance. I mean, can you believe that? Not a chance. I have deadlines. I have people waiting for me. Not to mention, I have. I remember this place. My mother used to bring me here after school. How come I don't remember you? I only moved here a couple of years ago. I'm not a native. Oh, you moved. Mm-hmm. Yes, 
spent my whole life living in a small town. The minute I had a chance, I took off. I studied at Oxford, traveled through Africa and South America, volunteered, and then back to the States. I studied law at Boston University. Over a winter holiday, a pal and I thought we'd go exploring, and that's when we found New Kerry. It was perfect for me. With all of your travels, you don't find it boring? <laughs> boring? No, I, I have my work, I have my bookstore, my coffee shop, my boat, my friends and my dog. It's not for everyone. That's what my law school girlfriend said to me just before she left. I guess she was having a case of island fever, as they call it. She said there's a whole world out there. To which I replied, I know. That's why I'm here. That's nice. It's the truth. It was a pleasure. It was. Kate, if you, um, if you need anything while you're here, my card. Did I already say thank you? No. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> It'd be great to see you again. Good night. Good night. Connor Bailey. You like her. You don't like her too much. She's getting married next month. He's like the richest guy in all of New York. They're madly in love. So where is he? release, and I want to make sure that we're in agreement here. Catherine Wallach. Mm. How does that sound to you? Oh. Perfect. Good. Now tell her it's a go. See you in two days. Kate? Today's the fair, let's... Whoa, mm. what happened exactly? She found the tavern. Uh. You coming to the fair, dear? Uh. Do I look like I can go to a fair? Oh, well. It's too bad, it would have been a good chance to see Kavanaugh and Donahue. Mm. I'm gonna need some aspirin. On it. Is that all you have? Here, take these. Oh, no thanks. I'm fine. Hardly. <laughs> Look at yourself. It's a farmer's field. Maybe you'd be happier in boots. Wondered what your life would be like if you'd stayed. Never 
crossed my mind. Feel that? That wind coming out of the west? I bet it tops out at about five on the Beaufort scale. Fascinating. That's about 17 to 21 knots. Stop that, will you? <laughs> Greg's always forecasting. I wish he'd spend his time working on something he could actually control. Speaking of which... Slow down! Sit down! Whoa! Whoa. <laughs> I can't get him to do anything. You can't, eh? You need to tell him that you're frustrated. But you also need to show him that you are the alpha dog. You're the big guy in this relationship. I am? He won't listen to you until he knows that you mean it. So every time your dog pulls in the leash, sit him down. Hey, Fee, they got pickles. Have him sit. Sit. <laughs> Wait until he calms down. And then continue on. Okay, thanks. You wanna try it? I'll try it. <laughs> Sit. It worked. Hey! Whoa! Bumper sit! Sit! <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. That was a nice thing you did. Oh, that. Sit. Good boy. That actually was all Tess's idea. Come here. Come on. Come say hi. No, that's okay. No, really, it's all right. Just give me your hand. She's not going to attack you like some horrible wildlife special, I promise. Good girl. That's so bad. Am I that obvious? No, not that obvious. <laughs> oh, right. I'm sorry. Excuse me for a second. Are you feeling all right? Because I just saw you... It's a dog, Jeffrey. Don't be so surprised. Mm. Donahue. Look, I just wanted to apologize for the way things went yesterday, and I... Listen, I want to help you, I do. It's a terribly sad thing that's happened. And I miss Daniel every day since he left. Not only lost a friend... But now it appears I've lost him forever. Well, what am I doing? For you, I'll do it. You will. I'll apologize to Kevin off. It brings you some peace and comfort. It really would. Thank you. Would you be willing to do it now? No. Yeah. Uh, do you know where he is? Um. A fine selection you have here. Hmm. Nice choice of wood. Indeed. Would you look at him? He can't even say anything nice back. It's not as if he hasn't seen my furniture. Oh, it's all about you, isn't it, Donahue? I told you he'd never apologize. I'm sorry, Catherine. It's... At least now you know who's the better man. What? Better man? Ha! You can't even admit when you're wrong! Because I'm not, you... Oh. Donahue! <sighs> Kavanaugh! Kavanaugh! Hey. Oh. You can't believe the things I'm finding. Handmade fisherman sweaters, quilts to die for. Jeffrey. What? 
Hi. Connor. Mm. Jeffrey. That was a great try. Really? Because I'm about over the whole thing. You ready to go? Kate, I'm not even close to being done. Ooh, Irish linen. Oh. You care to walk? Sure. Come on, Tess. No. <laughs> she pushed me way back. Oh. Hi, honey. I'm on my way to Dallas. I want to know where you uh, wanted to have dinner tomorrow night so I can get Michael to make a reservation. Reservation? You're coming home tomorrow? Yes. We're meeting the Roths for dinner and the opera? Right. Uh, the thing of it is, is I'm, I'm not in the city. Where are you? I'm in New Cary, uh, Massachusetts. What? I'm sorry, I didn't tell you earlier. It's just I'm dealing with... Something that's sort of um, complicated. How complicated could it be? Things are just uh, falling apart here, and I needed to be here. I'm the only one who could handle it. Work, 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 huh? <laughs> You're starting to think like a wallach. Okay. Just get back soon, huh? Okay, I'll call you when this is all settled. Fair enough. Into the village. You need anything? Uh, no. I'll get what I need when I go in later. Fiona, hmm? where did you find that? What, that? Yeah. John's antique store? It's in the village. I just thought they were lovely. No, no, no. It's not lovely, Fiona. It's impeccable. Do you have any idea what you have here? Mercy. <clears throat> This was manufactured by Matthews and Craig out of Manchester, England, one of the leading glassmakers at the turn of the penultimate century. There are very few remaining in the world. I've tried to complete my collection for the last 10 years. They're impossible to find. Not if you go to John's antique store. Good morning. Hey, Fee, can I borrow your wellies? Of course, they're right in there. Thank Did you just ask for her boots? Yes. Mm. And a coat? Take what you like. No, no, no. You put juice in these? No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Meet me here later. Huh. How do I look? Uh, Perfect. Different. Oh. Perfect. Different. You know, it really is amazing to me how much she can handle that girl. What? Kate, how do you think she does it? How do I think she does it? How do I think she does it? That's it. Come again? For 12 years, Craig Beamish, I have cleaned your house, washed your clothes, cooked your meals, raised your kids, and not once have you ever asked me how I did it. Well, I've had it. Bet you didn't see this storm coming. Your Honor, a word. Make it quick. I've got the ferry to catch. Mrs. Murphy promises me that she had no idea she was docking in Mr. O'Malley's space. His family's had that birth for three generations. Surely she knew that. Look, we all know that Agnes is a lovely woman, if somewhat forgetful. But she's nice. 
I'm sure she was absolutely in the dark, as she says she was. Surely you believe her, Your Honor. That's up to the Commonwealth to decide. Well, come on, Sam. Don't push me, Connor. Well, now my day is looking up. I have a favor to ask. Are we talking to please hold my space in the line? Or I'm calling because I need you to come down and bail me out kind of favor? Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> well, then maybe we should discuss this. Over what I believe you would call a power lunch. OK. We're gonna love this. Hmm. Very impressive. <laughs> and all in the middle of a work day. Well, that's Stu Carey's way of multitasking. Story of my life. How's that? Well, between the meetings, which invariably lead to more meetings, phone calls, which invariably lead to more phone calls, <sighs> meeting deadlines, putting out fires, damage control. Most evenings that end at events at the Met and Waldorf. An entire day can go by. I can forget how it even began. But I am not complaining. I love what I do. Sounds very hectic what you do. People need what we have to offer. It's advice on how to best lead their lives. Well, I think it's very admirable what you do. Helping people. I like helping people solve their problems, too. So you're getting married? Mm-hmm. Three weeks. So why isn't he here? Stuart likes things uh, neat and tidy. There's no reason for him to be here, and this is my past. Well, it might be your past, but you're here. Well. Stuart? He likes to look ahead. We both do. We have the same goals and the same clear-cut objectives for our future. Right. Well, I'm sure you'll have very ambitious children. Mm. No kids. He has kids. Oh. Boys? Girls? Men. Women, actually. They've uh, got kids of their own. He's been married before. The starter marriage. Mm. Two starter marriages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Neat and tidy. <sighs> well. So what about you? Have you ever been married before? No, I've never been able to find the right fit. Hmm. And all of your travels? Well, that was mostly about finding myself. I won't find anyone else. How's that going for you? I'll let you know when I get there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I thought this was going to be easier. Coming here. You know, that I would just do what I needed to do and... sort of become more complicated. Hasn't been just neat and tidy. Neat and tidy, no. <laughs> so much. Yeah. See, my father's been gone for 25 years. My mother died when I was nine, and he abandoned me. He left me with family, virtual strangers. And I waited for him to come back. And he never did. And so, here I am trying to prove that I'm the better person by not abandoning him, and I you know, can't seem to get it done. And the more time that I spend in New Carry, the more confusing it becomes because the minute that I fulfill his wish is the minute 
I leave, and I'm not coming back. I'm never coming back here. Why wouldn't you ever come back here? So what was that favor you wanted to ask me? Uh, they had a picture! <laughs> I'm going out. Call if you need anything. Okay, thank you. All right, let's get to work. You expect me to work here? Come on, Connor was nice enough to let us use it. Well, in that case, it's time to organize. Let's get to work. Your wedding? Yeah. Looks like a lot, I know. <laughs> oh, it looks like it's gonna be heavenly. Well, if it all goes according to plan, it will be. <laughs> plan. What? Oh. Now, the day Craig asked me to marry him, we had some of the worst rains new Carrie had ever seen. Couldn't even get out of the house to share the news. He had to give me an IOU for a ring. We had no money. The wedding was right out there in the meadow. It's potluck. Everybody brought something homemade. My mother even made my gown. And we had friends come and play music. Yeah, they weren't very good, but people stayed till sunup. <laughs> oh, I wish my boys could see how romantic Craig was on that day. You're a very lucky woman, Fee. <laughs> you think so? God's work. Craig, this might be none of my business. What? You love Fiona. Of course. She's not questioning that, is she? No, no, no. Just sometimes. A woman just needs you to show her that, that she means more to you than anything in the world. No, I'm gonna do Why it. Why bother? It's easier if I just do it myself. Easier for who? You always try and do everything yourself. Fiona. Without you, this family would be nothing. The only things I care about in this world are you and the boys, and you need to take care of yourself. Let me take care of us for a while. I adore you. And I appreciate you. I love you, V.
What happened in here? I let you use my office and now I can't find anything. I'm sorry. Here, let me help you. What are we looking for? I thought we were doing you a favor. How's that? Forcing you to face your clutter. You'll thank us later. Clutter? I knew where everything was. Ha! Impossible. Quite possible. Thank you. We don't all live by your rules, you know. I think there's only one way you could possibly make this up to me. Anything. Fire yourself. What? Fire yourself for the day and come spend it with me. Uh, hey, if you don't go, I will. Uh, come spend the day with me, Kate Madigan, or I'm terminating your lease. Okay. <laughs> and what shall I tell our people in New York? Tell them I can wait. They grow up so fast. So what do I write? Oh, no. <laughs> This isn't painful for you? Just laying the day, take its natural course, not having a plan. I think I'll get over it. <laughs> Hi, honey. No one else seems to know where you are or what you're actually doing. Stuart, I told you. This is totally unlike you, Kate. And no way to conduct your business or your future marriage. I know. I will explain everything when I get back. Really? And when will that be? In a day, a week, a year? I've totally had enough of this, Kate. I want you home with me. I will be back as soon as I can. Good. Because there's a magazine here that needs you, Kate. And a wedding that has to be handled. I've got it under control, Stuart. I'm not so sure you do. Call me when you're on your way. I'll be waiting. I'm sorry. It's okay. I should go. It's okay, I'll just I'll just pack this stuff up. Thank you for a wonderful day. It was my pleasure. I'll see you at the office. Oh, your sweater. I'll get it later. If you can't find it in your heart to help, then I guess I've got nothing left to say. Okay. What? Really? Yes, really. Well then, in that case, what's it gonna be? I don't know. Oh, come on, you're not gonna blow my streak. Fried clams, please.
just came by to say that we're here for you. We'll do anything you need. You will. We're uh, sorry for making this any more difficult than it already needed to be. You did this. Well, it made us realize that that we we were based in whatever time we have left. Of course, we would have gotten over this much sooner if uh, Donna, you had simply apologized. Me apologize to you? Well, you're the one who started it. I only asked after Daniel left that we call ourselves by a our rightful name, Donahue and Kavanaugh. We could have gone on singing for years. Yes, but we had agreed that to be fair, we would list our names alphabetically, which would have been Kavanaugh and Donahue, just like Lennon and McCartney. <laughs> <clears throat> that, that's, that's what this was all about. Oh, no surprise here. My dad even left his two best friends fighting. Come again? He never thought about anybody but himself. What? what? You, you, you've got it all wrong, Catherine. Y your father didn't know what to do after your mother passed on. He, he didn't know how to provide for you here in New Cary, who, who could look after you. He just, he wanted to protect you. Catherine, he loved you so much. He was willing to sacrifice everything for you. No, he sacrificed me for everything else. Oh, Catherine. You don't leave your child. He left me. He told me he was coming back. He told me to write everything down. And you know what? I did. Do you know how many boxes of journals I have? That he never got to see because he never came back. But he did love you. How on earth would you know that? Because we have the letters to prove it. It's never ending, always moving from town to town to find work. All I can think of is Catherine. May Mary forgive me for giving her up. But so much time has passed now, I fear she won't want me back. It's been so hard, watching her life blossom from afar. But she seems so happy now. I hope that one day she will know how much I always loved her. Hi. Are you all right? I'd rather not be alone right now. Would you like to go for a walk? Would you like milk? Please. Sugar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So are you going to marry him? Biscuit. Uh, uh. It's a big event. Everyone's going to be there. Reporters, dignitaries, politicians, celebrities. Well, when you put it that way. <laughs> so why is it you don't seem very happy? I was just, um, wondering what it would have been like to have my father walk me down the aisle.
Well then, allow me. Uh, what? Come on, take my arm. Come on. Come on. <laughs> All right, then. Are you ready? Ready. Hold on. Oh. You need a bouquet. Every bride needs a bouquet. Don't forget to say hello to the Shaughnessy's. Yeah. And the Brennans. I came all the way from Dublin for this, you know. Where are they sitting? Oh, hello. And oh, look, we're at the altar. Oh, wait. <laughs> this is my grand. It's a clan ring. It's beautiful. The story goes that some 400 years ago, a captured Irish fisherman fashioned a ring just like this for his girl back at home. Eventually, he escaped. And when he came home, he found that she was still waiting for him. And one on the right hand, that means your heart is unoccupied. One on the left, means let love and friendship reign forever. Never to be apart. I never really have been very much good at this understudy thing. May you see God's light on the path ahead. When the road you walk is dark, may you always hear, even in your hour of sorrow, the gentle singing of the lark. When times are hard, may hardness not turn your heart to stone. And may you always remember, you do not walk alone. I love you more. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. The summer's gone. And all the flowers are dying Tis you, tis you Must go and I must buy They've lifted the small craft warning so your crossing should be good. Fabulous. So come to the wedding. Is it for the world? Oh. Here, take this. I'm holding on to the other half. This means nothing without it.
I just wanted to say thank you. For everything. You're welcome. Continue that line of questioning. I'll see you in chambers. Let me step down. Anything further? You bet. Do not let this man go free. Sam, you'd like to cross-examine Connor Bailey. Connor Bailey? Have a seat. What? Take the stand. There must be some mistake, Sam. It's your honor. Now sit. Do you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth? No, not at all. Isn't it true that you, Connor Bailey, have fallen madly in love with Kate Madigan? What? Isn't it also true that you're deeply depressed because you're not with her? This is surreal. Mad. I object. Objection overruled. Continue the line of questioning. How much more of this can you take, Connor? So here's the real question. What are you doing here? Daniel. I know you love her. I love her too, but almost more than that, I need her. I hope I have your permission and your blessing, because it would mean everything in the world to me if she's mine. Prefer we could take a different tack. Kate? Whatever. <clears throat> um, can you all just excuse us for a moment? Sure. Just a moment. Thank you. That's very interesting. Hmm. Are you all right? I'm fine. Really? Kate, what are we doing here? Hmm? No, no, no. Better yet. Better yet. I will tell you what we're doing here. We're pretending. Yes, we're pretending that everything's the same. Pretending that you love Stuart Wallach and still want to marry him. Pretending that everything is perfect. Do you remember that piece you wrote for issue 37? 
going against your heart's desire. Hmm? Nobody likes a hypocrite. I'm just saying. Yes. Issue 37. Hello. He's not wrong, you know. Excuse me. 37. Follow your heart, no matter the road. And you would know this now? All right. Oh. So, are you busy? Because there's something I wanted to ask you. And you better make it quick. Sorry. What's going on, Kate? I should go. No. Wait. This is what happened when you were away. You deceived me. No. No. I've been deceiving myself, Stuart. I... I've been building this magazine with you and pretending that there's a perfect way to live, but I don't... I don't think I know what that is anymore, and... I, I want to be married. I do. But... What if I want kids? Or... Or a dog, or a, a messy desk, or a bike with a basket. And, um, I just, I just don't think I can be your kind of perfect anymore. I'm very, um, Disappointed, Kate. Those are non-negotiable terms. I guess we don't have a deal anymore. I'm so sorry. I, su I suppose I need a, a press release or something. There's a 400-year-old story about an Irish fisherman who was captured. I know that story, Connor Bailey. Do you know? Mm-hmm. And knowing that story, I'd say you're holding the wrong hand. Am I now? Indeed you are. <laughs>